My name is Birdie, and I am Laotian. I do American pop music with a swing of R&B and a bit of techno and, uh, I guess, electronic music. Oh, my name is Tony Lowe, and, uh, you know, I, I, I've been singing ever since I was a kid, but I never thought that I, I'd take it seriously as a career. And, you know, growing up, you know, I've, I've been listening to artists like Usher and Omarion, and, you know, that just inspired me so much. And first off, when I started, I was just in the performing arts as a dancer. <laughs> started taking choir courses uh, I really I really like singing and it, I just kind of developed my my singing skills taking choir class and my choir teacher told me that I have talent and then that's when I started building on that talent and I started doing um, started joining talent shows you know started just started singing wherever I could and here I am today like among R&B singer that's what I'm trying to go for I was born in Sacramento California right at a couple months after my parents <laughs> immigrated from uh, Laos. And before they came here, they, be, uh, they came here at a refugee camp. So they were refugees, most, I think most uh, immigrants are during the 80s. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a struggle for them. My father had to like cut down trees in the backyard in an apartment in order for them to get money. Luckily, uh, our, our relatives had came over first, so we'd stayed with them before we did anything and and they moved to Minnesota for better jobs and then we kind of followed them all around. As far as fitting into the pop culture, it, it's been a struggle. I can't come across as doing or be, being Laotian. I have to be more of like I'm representing Asian people. Doing pop music, it involves a lot of, a lot of money and it's hard to do underground pop because <laughs> pop really is the big money. <laughs> Being Asian and looking more ethnic has is, is been a lot of struggle. Uh, you'd have to almost, almost look or talk more American and, and uh, non-ethnic. I'm, I'm trying to bring like a new, a new kind of feel to the Hmong, to the uh, the Hmong industry music industry you know try to do something different because as far as I've seen uh, there hasn't been um, like any Hmong person or like a Hmong group a Hmong band that has uh, put R&B into their, the kind of music that it's in the industry right now so I'm trying to do something different. Laotian community uh, yes they do do believe either they don't support you if you're doing American music you almost have to have money to do it um, but if you're doing Laotian music or traditional music, as far as, you know, the countryside, south side of Laos, you can't do that unless you're from Laos. So it's hard to do both at once. You have to choose a side, one side or another, I think. And, uh, they, I mean, they'll buy your music and all that, but I believe that they wouldn't follow through or follow up, you know, on internet and, and, and chat with you or anything like that, or maybe... But uh, no, I don't believe Laotian would support. I think the, the Asian community overall will support. I mean, uh, definitely, I know the younger people are, are feeling that kind of vibe because that's what they listen to on the radio right now. And um, as far as like the older people, the elders, you know, they're, they're going to look upon this and, you know, they're going to think their ways, oh, you know, he's, he's going for something else and he's like, he's going way past that Hmong culture, you know, he's changing. But then like, from, from how I see it, like, I, I, I'm just doing what I'm, what, what I'm trying to do, you know, I'm trying to be a Hmong R&B singer, and you know, there's, you know, like other other people out there, they're thinking that, you know, he's he's Asian, you know, what, what is he doing singing R&B? But then, you know, that's what I feel. <laughs>